Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about mucormycosis which is a fungal disease prevalent in immunocompromised individuals such as people who are recovering from COVID-19 or people who are suffering from cancer or HIV. So mucormycosis is a fungal disease and it has taken the headline of news these days. It has created a huge fury in everybody's mind. So let us try to understand what is mucormycosis, what is the biological basis of this infection, how we can prevent the infection and what are the possible treatment options. So stay tuned till the end of this video. Mucormycosis, which was previously known as zygomycosis, is a serious but rare fungal infection, which is caused by a group of moles known as mucormycosis. Uh, mucormycetes. So these mucormycetes group encompasses rhizopus species and mucor species which roughly look like this. They have a characteristic shape. Now these moles live throughout the environment. They are almost everywhere. We would learn in specific region where they are present or where they are abundant but the key picture which is coming out from the news headlines is it is creating a huge swelling and inflammation near the ocular area and many people are losing their vision due to these kind of infection. So let's try to understand the pathophysiology of this disease. So first let's ask that how does this infection happen and where do you find these funguses? We can find mucormycosis in many places such as moist soil, decaying organic matter, animal dung, leaves, etc. All of these places you might find these funguses. Now once you are passing through this area, some of the fungal spores you might accidentally, unknowingly, you might have inhaled them. Now in normal situation, it's not a big deal. Our body knows how to fight against it. But it's a big deal for people who are immunocompromised. And in a moment it would be clear. But before that, let me tell you, these fungal infection can happen via several routes. One of the common route is entry via inhalation, where the spores enter our uh, lungs via uh, our airways, right? Second, there could be also entry point via a injury site. Let's say you have an injury in your hand and these fungus spores might have entered your system via that. Or it could be taken inside with food. So there could be also gut associated entry points. Now any fungal disease can be classified based on following criteria and it's important to understand the several classes of uh, mucormycosis infection as well. So based on the site of infection we can classify them as superficial, cutaneous, subcutaneous, deep or systemic. Now based on route of acquisition they could be exogenous versus endogenous and based on virulence they could be primary or opportunistic. So these are different classification modes. Now let me tell you as far as these mucormycosis infection is concerned there are uh, rhinocerebral mucormycosis which generally affects the sinus and the brain whose symptoms include one-sided facial swelling, headache, na na nasal congestion, jaw pain, maybe fever etc. Now there are other types such as pulmonary mucormycosis whose um, Symptoms include fever, cough, severe chest pain, shortness of breath, etc. There are other types such as cutaneous uh, mucormycosis where skin is getting um, infected and there are patches, blemishes on, si on the screen. There could be pain, warmth, excessive redness on those areas. Now in case of gastrointestinal mucormycosis, there could be severe abdominal pain pain, nausea and gastrointestinal bleeding. All of these uh, kind of infections are possible. Now the last type is disseminated uh, mucormycosis. 
Now, this typically occurs in people who are suffering from several diseases or several medical conditions or they are suffering from comorbidity such as diabetes. So, it's very difficult to track what is the cause of their bad health and this is the severe most case. Now, these fungi aren't really harmful to people and our body learned that how we can possibly deal with these fungi. Problem occurs in immunocompromised individuals because their body don't know how to really deal with it and their immune system is now weakened. So this kind of infection is prevalent in patients who had undergone organ transplantation, stem cell transplantation, some kind of injury or people who are using immunosuppressants for a long time such as corticosteroid usage for a long time, right? There could be also uh, chances that people who are abusing drugs, people who are taking diabetic medications, people who are taking chemotherapy or undergoing or fighting with cancer, they might also catch this infection because their immune system is also weakened. So it's kind of a secondary infection that happens when your immune system is really weak. Generally, the chances are if you are having a very good immune, immune response and your immune system is good, then you might not catch this infection. And even if you catch this infection, your body knows how to deal with it. For ex specifically, let's take the example of AIDS patient. Now, AIDS patient, they have very low count of TH helper cells. And that is why they are more prone to fungal infection. Now, these kind of data tells us that these TH helper cells, they are really important to combat fungal infection. If you want to learn detailed procedure by which our body fight back these kind of fung fungal infection, you can click on the I button and the video would be there for you. Now, the biggest question that we have in our mind that is mucormycosis contagious, as contagious as COVID-19? And the answer is no, it's not contagious. So the chances are you are not spreading, spreading it to an individual who is near you. Now the question is how we can lower the risk of mucormycosis. First of all, we can possibly avoid places which are dusty or which has all of cow dung or other kind of like animal uh, fish, fishes, moist soil or places which are moist and filled up with funguses we can possibly avoid those places. Now, if that is not possible, one way of preventing or reducing the risk of infection is using a N95 mask and also maintaining good hand hygiene is crucial for avoiding the infection. Lastly, what we can all do is get a healthy meal and eat those substances which can boost our immune reaction. Now, this is an indirect way of fighting back because if we strengthen our immune system, it might be more efficient in terms of clearing fungal infection as well. And we have to avoid processed food as much as possible because they, doesn't have, uh, they don't have a nutritive values and they are not really useful to boost our immunity. Now, let's try to understand how the detection of mucormycosis takes place. Let's say you have a mucormycosis in lung, so it's a pulmonary variant of that. So, you can possibly have a biopsy from your lung or if you have a sin sinus uh, or cranial sinus uh, kind of mucormycosis infection, you might have a sample from uh, the sin sinuses. And lastly, the, those samples are sent to the lab where culture experiments are performed or using microscopy, you can also determine whether this fungus has infected your body or not. Your doctor might also prescribe a CT scan in specific cases. Now, let's try to understand how our body fight back against funguses. You know, the detailed video is given in the I button. There are several cell types in our body which plays crucial role in terms of fighting funguses. One such cell type is uh, neutrophil. But before that, let me tell you, both our immune system, that means the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system has the capability of fighting funguses. Immune, uh, innate immune cells such as macrophages, dendritic cells or neutrophils can fight funguses. Specifically, Th1 subtype of cell and Th17 type 
of cell can fight back funguses. Now phagocytosis by neutrophil is one of the strong defense response against the fungi. And another strong um, immune response against the fungi is orchestrated by Th1 subtype which produce interferon gamma which is a cytokine and that is how it try to uh, cope up with the fungal infection. Now interferon gamma activates macrophages increase their phagocytotic capability and this is how our body fights back. Now Th17 cell is one of us subtype of T helper cell which is specialized for fighting against fungal infections. Now these Th17 cells secrete one particular molecule which is known as IL-17 that is crucial to fight fungal infections. It is found that when there is a fungal infection these Th cells get differentiated to this specific subtype. And this happens via specific cytokine signaling. But where does this cytokine come from? This cytokine come from or secreted by dendritic cell or macrophages. When dendritic cell and macrophage sense the, pro sense the presence of funguses like mucormycosis, they sense a signal to these TH cells and they push them to get differentiated or to become this specific subtype which can combat these fungal infections. But all of these mechanisms fails or these mechanisms are severely compromised in patients which are undergoing um, AIDS, HIV, cancer or people who are recovering for, from COVID-19 whose immunity is very weak. So which, I mean these increases the chances of having this kind of secondary fungal infection. Now, let's understand that all of these fungus species that we talked about, all of them are not bad. After watching this video, if you think all of these funguses are bad, it's not true. There are millions of fungal species and about 400 to 500 are potential disease causing agent. So all of them are not bad. Indeed, we eat nice mushrooms in our diet, which is also very beneficial for us. So in this situation, you have to understand what possibly, uh, what medications can be prescribed. So to combat with fungal infection, doctors might prescribe antifungal agents, and I'm not going to take any names for them. But in case of severe infection, surgical removal of the tissue might be useful and this is up to our responsible healthcare workers, doctors and nurses. They would assess the situation and do whatever is necessary. So a huge respect to them. I hope you enjoyed this video and this video was informative for you to understand the concept. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. And if you can and possibly you can support me in Patreon. Let this video be a fundraiser video. All the fun that this particular video would raise, I would donate all of that in charity. With that, I'll say goodbye to you guys. Thanks for listening.